Hey, it's me. I got something that I want to share with you. So I've been thinking a lot about how love, like the real deep kind, you know, think universal love, divine love, unconditional love, uh, the love that fills up the universe, is kind of like this living force that moves in endless cycles. It's as if everything spiritual moves in these perfect circles, and every creature is searching for this powerful beam of love, whether they realize it or not. I mean, that deep longing we sometimes feel, I think it's us reaching out for that universal love. And depending on where we're at in our lives, you know, we understand that longing differently. So some might recognize what they're feeling and they use that as fuel. They follow it through their thoughts and actions. Others, maybe they don't quite get it. And they might let the strong desire lead them into what I'll call mistakes. But I just mean like learnings, teachings. And then if they don't realize what they're truly searching for, they could very well chase after things that don't really fulfill them, like false goals or empty achievements. I know I've been there. But when someone reaches a point where they understand what these unexplained feelings really are, it's a huge step forward. Like, they start to know which direction to go. They make fewer mistakes, right? They require less less suffering, I think, in order to get those learnings. And they better understand their own inner selves. This love, this longing, it's kind of like the driving force in all of us. Even people who don't believe in anything spiritual, I think they still have these strong currents in their souls. When someone experiences a complete turnaround and starts to recognize this consciously, it's like they enter a new life. It can happen just like that too, like in the same lifetime. We don't need multiple lifetimes to experience this. And when we step through that door, that first door, What's on the other side is like brighter. It's this brighter world that we're met with. And yet there's other doors. Like There's much more to explore as well. I think most people find life for the most part pretty confusing. Like it's hard to see its meaning and purpose because we're only looking at things at a surface level. We haven't connected the dots with a deeper vision yet. And when we're in that place, everything seems pointless. Our sorrows, our challenges, our loneliness. But when we start to understand that this life is just one of many learning periods, like it's one link in this long chain, you start to begin to sense and I think start to understand how things are connected. And then your goal isn't just about immediate happiness. We're getting every wish fulfilled. You start looking at the bigger picture. And from there, you can handle hardships that come your way a lot easier. You pass the test and meet the conditions needed to reach a higher state of being, a lasting happiness that can't be taken away by any outside force. I've noticed that some people who've already taken those first steps, like have already walked through that first door, recognize these basic truths. And yet some of those people don't progress as much as they could, or perhaps as much as they would like. And I think it's because how fast we move forward depends on our own choices. So if we're just drifting along, we tend to have to go through the same things over and over until we get it, until we figure it out. Those who've recognized these truths are going to act differently, right? They're going to aim for personal growth. That's part of their desire, their intention. You know, at the same time, that doesn't mean ignoring everyday problems. Actually, I think our everyday and spiritual problems are very closely connected. An issue in our daily life is often an expression of a specific inner problem. 
the difference is in how you try to solve the problem and from what perspective. So if we solve the problem on a deeper level, then it allows us to find its true solution and address it more efficiently. You know, you, you see these people who know certain things and I would consider being one of these people, like for a long time, I had knowledge, okay, like book knowledge, but I didn't see the connection, the connections within myself, right? I was looking for answers somewhere outside myself, oftentimes by gathering more information. And gathering information, you know, it's good, but it's not enough. There has to be a balance. The knowledge that we gain has to be applied personally it needs to be understood deep down so that harmony is established right to really make progress i think you need to grow from both sides inner and outer so new knowledge is taken in when the old has been integrated and absorbed you know knowledge knowledge shouldn't just stay theoretical it has to be put into practice and you know take root in our personal life so everyone needs to expand their understanding of the true nature of things. And outer knowing is just one part of that. Without the inner assimilation, there isn't going to be harmony in our progress. There isn't going to be any real fulfillment. And really, I mean, you can argue that it's not real progress anyway. So we have to like, get to know ourselves, pay attention to ourselves, examine ourselves develop the discipline to overcome the resistance that's so tough at the beginning. Like to look at all our ideas that we have about ourselves that, you know, that flatter us, that aren't entirely true. When we let go of them or adjust them, like that's the work and that's the work that's unique for each of us. It's very personal. And I think at the same time, it's similar. For all of us too. So like when we talk about personal growth, we mean something very individual for each person. And yet at the same time, we're all asking ourselves, like what hidden part of me still doesn't react according to what's real and true? What part of me lacks, still lacks authenticity? Where am I not fully being myself in my life? Where do I lack clarity about certain things in my life? And that kind of self-examination, search for self-understanding, is ongoing. Like it never ends, right? But we will slowly be able to eliminate what's not right within ourselves by doing this process. I think as a result, we become happier too. Like you have to be clear about what obstacles are inside you to gain that clarity, to do that search within. Like that's the deep work. That's the real effort. So if we're lacking happiness in any area of our lives, you can't be sure it's directly connected to an outside block, but you can absolutely be sure it's connected to an inner block. If your wishes were simply granted without first removing those inner blocks, we can never be truly happy. Like you couldn't build lasting happiness. It would eventually fall apart. Only when we've established inner harmony and a relationship with these deeper laws of life, these natural laws, where those laws are fulfilled within ourselves, Subjective truth, subjective goodness, subjective beauty. Is our soul, I think, really ready to embrace happiness and joy? You know, people often wonder about connecting with something greater or tapping into higher wisdom. And they'll say things like, yeah, I can believe that that type of communication is possible but what does it do for me? Like, why do I, why do I need it? What do I get out of it? 
And for me, that connection to source, to higher power, gives me one of the parts that's necessary for this personal growth. You know, it, it takes it from the outside in. There's guidance there, there's hints, there's directions for searching, discovering. Right? So we need, like, constant encouragement, strength, support, help. And that help, that guidance can come through connection with the spiritual side of things, with, with God, with source, with the universe. There's always been these exceptional wise people that others could turn to, right? In these cases, too, just as with someone who channels wisdom, higher understanding is directly active. So in one case, the influence is through inspiration, and in another case, maybe it operates directly, but help from the outside in whatever way is an important element without which you can't grow. You can use the knowledge you acquire as material, as the building blocks with which you build your life in your own way. You know, in our last conversation, we talked about making decisions and it got me to thinking about, well, how do you know what is the right decision? Like, what is the right action to take? You know, many, many of us can make decisions. Well, all of us can make decisions on a surface level. Although some people find it more difficult than others. A lot of people can make inner decisions, though. Their emotions and inner reactions are a block you know, it makes them incapable of deciding inwardly and they don't even realize it because it's hidden. Only when they start weighing their deepest motives and emotions do they figure out what's been going on. And then, then from that place, they can begin to make inner decisions. So the inability to make inner decisions shows up not only in the problems, you know, that seem to involve other people a lot of the time in our relationships, but also like in our attitudes and our feelings and our reactions. Now, I think it's interesting that those who, who won't make a decision are often the same ones who sincerely strive to follow their heart's yearning. So even though they truly want to do what's right and fair, they shy away from doing something because it may not please others or because it may not align with other people's values, right? They're afraid of doing wrong, so they don't do anything. The thing they don't understand is that by not making a decision, they're making a decision. The world, time, it never stands still. Everything is moving. So whatever you do, including doing nothing, has consequences. It has effects. So when you avoid making a decision, it means you haven't yet found the key to your soul. You live, often without being aware of this, in fear. You don't take command of your own ship, believing and hoping, usually unconsciously, that fate or someone else is going to make the decision for you. And sometimes that can happen, sure. But generally, we have to learn to take responsibility for our own decisions, right? We have to learn to pierce that dark cloud, so to speak, that hides the truth and creates the, the confusion. And we have to do that on our own, by our own effort, through personal inner work. That self-awareness piece, know thyself. Striving to overcome resistance, that resistance that we feel at the beginning of delving into this deeper work, is really the only way to sharpen our inner vision. Right? Only by doing that can we perceive what's in our own soul. We have to aim to achieve our personal development by solving problems that we previously avoided. You need to confront an issue instead of dodging it, like the ostrich burying its head in the sand. Right? And then, if after facing the problem, 
you come to the conclusion that, okay, I wasn't yet capable of making the decision because I can't see which direction to take. That's totally different. Then you can seek inspiration and understanding and be ready to receive it and act accordingly, right? The insight you need will come to you once you've prepared yourself through your own efforts. So it's one thing to avoid a decision, like cover up everything related to it and turn away from the problem altogether. What I mean by the ostrich putting its head in the sand. And it's quite another to strive for truth and knowingly decide not to make a decision until, after more personal effort, I'm ready to take the right course. And then when the decision is truly the right one, you have no doubt. I think only in this way, in that type of process, can we become the captain of our own ship. We start to recognize the pure truth of a situation and just intuitively know what the right action is for me. But we can only do that. We can only tap into that intuition once we've let go of all the self-flattering illusions, everything that feeds complacency and tempts us to take the, the easy way out, the easy road. Right. So when people live their whole lives avoiding decisions, a chain reaction inevitably follows. A pattern is created that makes it even more difficult in the future to untangle the knots and learn to make decisions. Right? So we have to consider that. Like understand that avoiding decisions will cause harm. Not only spiritually, but also in everyday matters. It's true even from the point of view of your own self-interest. You have to build your own happiness by fully embracing the deeper principles of life. Without making those choices, there's really no benefit. Anyway, just wanted to share those thoughts with you because they've been on my mind. Let me know, like, does any of this resonate with you? What are your thoughts? I'd love to hear from you. Sending love. Let's connect soon.